For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, my beloved brethren, we shall be reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, chapter 15 and verse 11. 15, 11. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted, fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might, might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and found, and is found. Amen. An environment that was especially blessed in this amazing parable of the Lord, the parable of the prodigal son, or the other way it's called, the parable of the love of the Father. Through this parable, you can see the life of man, of humanity, where God invited once he created man and appointed him in the most blessed place in paradise giving him specific and unique a specific and unique command all is under your authority but only one tree of all the thousands maybe a million of the trees of paradise you cannot touch the knowledge of good and bad the tree of the knowledge of good and bad because if you don't if you know this fruit, if you eat this fruit, if this fruit becomes yours, you will die. In good, you live happily and in the presence of God. But if your heart is deceived and you desire what is bad, and the bad isn't anything else but sin, and sin is iniquity in your relationship with God. 
or in unrighteousness in your relationship with people or the works of the flesh in the relationship with yourself, then you will die. And this command wasn't only for then, it's for always. Always and today. Today, to the people who have been reborn, who have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in the remission of sins, who have been filled with the Holy Spirit, and as they accepted Jesus Christ in their life, the God the Father gave authority to them to be children of God. And to these people, the same commandment. Everything is under your authority. Everything, though, is not for your advantage. What is for your advantage is the will of God, which is good, acceptable and perfect. It's the word of God. It's the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is your life in Christ Jesus. It is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And what is to your advantage? Is not to your advantage, is the world and the things of the world. These are not for your gain. The desires of the flesh, the desires of your eyes and the pride of life. In these things which your world offers, you can see they're there, look at the tree. There's the world, there's Babylon, there's the enticers, there, the invitations, the lies. There's the darkness, there's death. There's wickedness, evil, jealousy, envy. This is the fruit of the knowledge of what's evil. Do not reach out and get it to eat, because you will die. And as then the devil with great deception, as it was the wisest of the animals in which God permitted to enter into the paradise of God. Because God doesn't want man to be a robot. He wants him to be victorious, a winner. He doesn't want to put man in a monastery, to lock him up in there, so he won't sin. Because there he will sin also. Because sin isn't, when it's, Sin firstly isn't executed, firstly it's conceived, then executed. And it's conceived by desire. And you cannot put a person in jail so they won't sin, because God has created him and her to be completely free. And made people with one blood, with one life that's the same with one heart to have the same desires and with a spirit to have the ability to choose and reject. No one can jail the spirit of man. No one can bind the desires of man. No one can make a man not sin by force. Sin is close. Sin is close to every man. The devil, and that's his work, can offer abundantly sin to man. But the word of God is close to you also. And whoever believes in the word of God with his heart and confesses with his lips, he has eternal life. But at the same time, we know very, very well our weaknesses, that we are human. But we also know very, very well that when we are weak and we confess it, then Christ is strong in our lives. So the secret isn't how weak we are, We're, because we are. But the great secret is, how do we confess and know the power of God so it can be revealed in our lives completely, full, complete and perfect? In other words, how much do we believe? And we believe it means we trust the love of God the Father in our lives. The grace of Jesus Christ in our lives. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The truth of the Word of God in our lives. And the intention of the Holy Spirit to guide and to direct your way always. That's a great secret.
and even more so for us to acknowledge that the devil has the ability with fiery darts to wound our hearts and our faith creating inside of us roots of iniquity and he succeeded in his parable and to the younger son and to the oldest older son the younger son he brought him a nice image as Christ do you see all these kingdoms if you bow before me I will give them to you because they're under my authority because he believed the Lord of hosts the Son of God cared and could deceive him with the kingdoms of this world but the Lord said get behind me Satan hallelujah get behind me Satan leave and he left but we don't have this power many times we do but we don't have it always and God knows this many times we can say get behind me Satan and we go on but sometimes in some small special desires as the word of God says the easily tangled sin that entangles us easily that's where we will fall into as the younger son fell into so the devil brought him an image of a faraway country full of celebrations temporary enjoyment of sin the word of God says lights desires joys having fun up all night prodigal living freedom but of the world not of the Holy Spirit and the heart conceived conceived sin the desire conceived it conceived sin and now starts to give birth so the sin can be executed he thinks I want this faraway country to enjoy it what am I doing here all day with my father all day with my brethren in the fields doesn't take under account freedom joy blessings love inside of his heart has a desire of the faraway country and he thinks how will it succeed to obtain this country and he found the solution because sin will be birth and the person will execute it I will tell my father to give me what belongs to me and it's very great so everything I'll obtain there and I'll never finish all these things that my father will give me and he goes to his father and faithful in his words God because that's a father he cannot deny himself that is a father he accepts the gift that he gave him complete freedom can you you can go wherever you want you can do whatever you want and I'm obligated to give you what belongs to you that's God my brethren that's the freedom of God you can do whatever you want you can go wherever you want and I am obligated to give you all that belongs to you and he did and he filled his pockets with it he filled his sacks with it he took all his possessions an awesome an awesome loot an awesome awesome possessions and he started to go off to the faraway country there he lost everything he did whatever was before him he had no control whatsoever he dived straight into sin a transgressor he had not understood his future but he is in a towards a downfall but today we have understood it because God explained to us transgressors will fall the just will continue not only will they fall, they will be brought down. Destruction is coming. 
He did not think, and how could he think of such a thing, that this way is destructive. He hoped that it would last for a whole life, that possession that he took from his father, that it would last forever, him enjoying sin, celebrations, partying, having fun. But this is a lie of the devil and the heart of man, which deceitful above all things are desperately wicked. It's finished. And the life of man finishes in this world. Joy finishes. Power finishes. Success finishes. Glory finishes. Beauty finishes. A person is destroyed. And so will be. he will be destroyed also. Completely. There's no chance that he will not be destroyed in the path that he's walking on. In the way that he has chosen. And this wasn't enough. There was famine. And he had nothing to eat. And he had to go and find an Assyrian. To ask for salvation. A shepherd. He shepherd pigs. And he allowed him to keep his pigs. But not allow him to even eat the pods that the swine ate. Is it salvation for this person? There is one. Israel, you have fallen. And downfall from downfall, there is a difference. You can fall for a little while in this small, but your downfall can continue and continue and continue and to reach until the end. But, my beloved brethren, as long as we live, we have hope in the love of God. The love of God does not decrease, does not run out. We have a hope that God would do something for other people and for us in our downfall. With one intention, with one condition, the favorable way of approaching God, repentance, confession, acknowledging our weaknesses, and acknowledging the almightiness of God. I repeat, because of what God, as He has written it in my heart, to write in all of us. Confession, acknowledging, comprehending, and confessing our complete sin, our complete weaknesses, understanding and comprehending and confessing the almightiness of the good God that loves us. And he came to his, his senses all of a sudden and said, What am I doing here? He remembered. And he, my beloved brethren, like the devil, intervenes with his fiery darts and he reveals. To, the, to people, the images of earth, of the faraway country, and Christ succeeds to bring images, memories of the good land and the presence of God, for who for him is a faraway country. He's living in the land of the world and the land of God is far away. But from the moment when he came to his senses, things are starting to take a road of restoration. That's why, my brethren, today God is inviting us to be always in our senses, to come continually to our senses, acknowledging with the wisdom of God that we all stumble in many things, we all fall, that many, many days have gone by and many iniquities have come into my heart and I need correction. I need to restore things quickly before the devil wins for God to take victory. I need to return, repent on my knees, confession. I need the confession of my weakness. Forgive me because I'm repeating this, but I believe that this is from God. 
confession, understanding of the almightiness of God, which nothing is impossible, and everything is possible to Him. What am I doing? And I'm being lost here. The servants in my father's house, they eat abundantly. And he took, made the right decision, being helped by the grace of God. Because he believed that his father would accept him. Maybe he did not believe that he would accept him as a son. But he believed they would accept him as a servant. And this faith, the little faith, has good results. It leads man to return. Without faith, no one can please God. I will go to my father. I will confess. I will repent. And I will say, I sin against you, Father. I sin against you and against heaven. I am weak. I'm not good enough to be your son. Please make me like one of your wages. And I believe that you will accept me when I say make me one of your servants. A good approach. A favorable approach. With faith. Not maybe true and complete and perfect, but he has a sweet faith. And even if this isn't faith, he's got hope that his father will accept him and will not reject him because he loves him, because he's his father. My brethren, God loves us. God never rejects you. Believe. We must have complete trust. There are no mistakes which overpass the love of God. There are no sins that overpass the grace of Christ. There are no downfalls that overpass the power of the Holy Spirit. God accepts us always and will continue accepting us until the end. I remember once, we had gone the I had gone in a disappointed way towards God because I made many mistakes that day, many, many mistakes actually. And I went and knelt, I cried, I said, Lord, will you forgive me this time? And I continue, I cannot understand how you can stand me. How can you stand me, Lord? How can you keep up with me? And I heard the voice of the Lord, I know your nature. I know, in other words, that you are human. And human means weak. Human means unprofitable, weak, wretched. Human means that no one is worth talking about. No man is worth talking about before God. We are all human, vile, wretched, small, unimportant, but we trust the love of our Father. We trust Jesus. We trust the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it took the way of return, an upward, a climb. It wasn't easy. And with amazement, before he reached the house of his Father, he discerned his Father to wait for him. When? From the first time. How? Until the end. Hallelujah. And you know here, my beloved brethren, we people make a very, very big mistake. We say, I must show long suffering. I must show long suffering with my wife, my children, my brother, my sister there. And at once, there's a question. A question is created. How much though? And the answer is, as much as it's needed until the rapture of the church. There are no limits in long-suffering. The long-suffering of God. Be imitators of God, the word of God cries out. And walk in love. There are no limits in patience. How much will I be patient as much as it's needed. Until when? Until the Lord comes and raptures me. 
the long suffering, the love of God has no limits. And it's very, very serious for us to put limits in our long suffering and patience. Because then we judge. And God will come so we can understand and repent and return. And He will put limits in His own long suffering and then we'll understand our mistakes. But I have said to the Lord and to you, Lord, I don't want to know, to learn from my mistakes and my downfalls. I want to learn from your word and from your doctrine. I want to be a good disciple because I've confessed that I am a disciple. And I want to learn from your word. I want you to put sense inside of me. You to teach me. You to direct me. You to counsel me. And your hand to be always upon me. How much shall I love? Until the end. How much shall I show patience? Until the end. How much shall I be show long suffering? Until the end. What end? My end. Hallelujah. Not your end. I will not wait for you to die, so I will stop having patience with you. But until I leave, my end, I will show patience until the end, my end. I will love you. Hallelujah. Amen, brethren. Until the end, I will love you. But you know what he did to me? You know what she did to me? You know what he said? You know what he... I know what Christ says. What you say? Forgive me, Lord. I don't really care. What Christ says has much importance for me. And what the Lord said, show long suffering. How much? Until the end. Burying one another in love. Until when? Until the end. What end? My, our end. Until I die, I will love you. I will bear you. I will show long suffering for all of you. I know, but I hope the grace of Christ that will dwell inside of me. With the grace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not, these are not easy things. But they are beautiful, my beloved brethren. The father, how long did he wait for? For the prodigal son. All his life. From when? From the first time. From the first time when he waved at him, he went outside waiting for him. Why? Because he loved him. Because his love did not decrease. Love has no limits. Patience has no limits. Long suffering of God has no pay, no limits. The grace of Christ has no limits. Just think, if he was waiting for him until yesterday, and for him to come today, how horrible it would have been. There goes the salvation for the prodigal son. Just think. For him to come to the last day of his life here on earth, he won. The prodigal son. And we want to win the more. Amen. Do we show patience? Are we long suffering until the end? In everything. In everything. Do we bear one another? With love until the end in everything. But because we are weak, Christ, we confess our weaknesses. But we also confess your almightiness. We cannot, but you who dwell inside of us can. Glory to God. Just think of the joy. The joy of the prodigal son who waited to just accept him and make him a servant. And he now sees the father to see him for far away and to run towards him. Full of love to fall, to hug and kiss him. To kiss him all over. To say, I love you my child, you came. You returned. And for him to whisper, the son, what he has said. Father, I sin before you, Father. I'm not worthy to be your son. Stop. You are my son. You are my child. I love you. He washed him. He cleansed him. He took out. He brought out. He did not enter the house because you can't enter the house without a, 
a, bl- a garment of blessings, he putting on the robe, the best robe, put on him a ring, put on sandals on his feet, and once he adorned him, made him beautiful, made him again a blessed and glorious child of his, he said, now go inside the house. And he entered gloriously in the house of the Father. He who ate the possessions of his father with the harlots. And he called his servants, My son is back, he was dead, and now he's alive, he was lost, and now he's found. Bring out now the fatted calf, because I kept it for him. I was saving it for him all this time. That's why I had not killed it. Because I wanted to kill it when my son would come back. And he did. But please, let's go now to the oldest son. The devil succeeded to put iniquity in the elder son's heart. Lack of love. Lack of patience. Lack of forgiveness. The elder son could not show long suffering until the end. Maybe at the beginning he could, in which I, but I doubt. But he had a judgmental spirit. He judged, discerned and judged again. And this judgmental spirit brings hell in the life of man. He judged, discerned, and condemned. Ah, him. And he was the youngest and the most loved child of the father. Who, I did so many things for him. Can't you see him? To leave? I can't believe he left the house and he's not even ashamed. And he took all the possessions of the father, the livelihood, and the father gave it to him also. And he went against the son and against the father. And sometimes we do go against the sinner and also the person who shows forgiveness to the sinner and we become judges and not executors of the word of God. And we count and we measure with scales that are fraud and barbaric, having a a judgmental spirit, creating condemnations. And God comes and says, in what measure you measure, in the same measure you'll be measured. And I want to measure my brethren with long-suffering completely, so I can find grace by God and to enjoy the long-suffering, His long-suffering completely, because I need it. Because we all stumble in many things. We need the complete long-suffering of God until the end. We need the complete patience of God to the end, for God to show patience for us until the end. But also for us to obtain the complete long-suffering patience and love of God, I firstly must, must offer the complete long-suffering of mine, my patience and my love to all of you, especially to my brethren. As the command of the Lord is, love one another, love one another, as I have loved you, with complete long-suffering, with complete patience, until when, Lord? Until the end, when the trumpet will be heard, and we are waiting, and Christ is waiting, and Christ is hoping for us to return. With such a heart, full of judgment, condemnation, opinion, and habit, the other son enters, coming back from the field, and what does he see? Song, dance. What's happening here? He's back. He's back. Your brother is back from the faraway country. He's back. And the father was happy. And he killed the fatted calf. And because he had this judgmental spirit, he could not be joyful with the father's joy. He could not enter the father's house. He was angry. I can't believe my father did this. He should be ashamed. He accepted the prodigal who ate his livelihood with harlots. I'm not entering the house. But the father loves the older son the same, or maybe even more. He went out and said, my son, come back. Come in. Your brother, don't you love him? He returned. He was dead and now he's alive. He was lost and now he's found. He's back. I was waiting for him. The older son was not waiting for him. He had no long suffering. My brethren, let's wait one another. Amen.
let's wait one another. Let's show patience. My sister once said to me, how much patience should I show? I can't handle it anymore. I say to her, I said to her, show patience, my sister. And so I said, Lord, give her patience, your patience. Let's bear one another in love. It's not easy many times to do so. It's difficult. Especially when we fall. Especially when our iniquity feels our heart. It's not easy. But it is necessary. It's the glory of God. God is glorified in our long suffering, in our patience, in our love. In this, our Father is glorified. For you to bring fruit and your fruit to remain. Then you will be my disciples if you love one another as I have loved you. Nice words, my brethren. In the end, the prodigal son returned. But the Holy One, elder son, full of judgmental spirit, was lost. He never entered. Or at least the word of God is revealed to us. Hopefully he did repent in the end, but we don't know from the word of God. But he did not enter into the house of the Father in the kingdom of heaven. My brethren, it's not only that God is pleased in the, our complete long suffering, but the most important thing is that only with the complete long suffering of ours do we assure our entrance richly through the gates into the kingdom of heaven. Show long suffering in everything. Bear one another in love. And then you shall enter richly through the gates into the kingdom of heaven. Amen.